Hi everyone, welcome to module three in our short course video series. I'm Ellie Peters and I'm excited to talk to you about parameterization or how we describe molecules for the use in statistical modeling. The parameterization module of our short course will be presented in three sections. In this video, we'll go over an introduction to how and why we quantitatively describe molecules. We'll then move on to a brief overview of some commonly used molecular descriptors. This will include a discussion on the development of design, designer parameters, and will also highlight the need to consider chemical space coverage and conformational effects on descriptors. Finally, in a separate video, Module 3.1 will walk through the steps of using the Sigma Group's tools to extract and compile parameters for use in statistical modeling. First, we'll go over the need for describing molecular structural differences and how, the, and how molecular descriptors fit into our aims of statistical modeling. As chemists, we know that by changing the structure of a molecule in different ways, we can also change its function. A fundamental question is how do we understand how a change in this structure can increase or refine its reactivity? As covered in other modules, the way the Sigmin lab approaches this question is to numerically describe these structures and find quantitative relationships between structure and observables. This method has been applied to a wide variety of problems, including the synthesis of pharmaceuticals, design of materials for batteries, and of course, catalytic transformations. These are complicated problems, so it's often difficult to find relationships between how a structural change might improve these processes. One reason this can be difficult is because we are not adequately describing these structural differences. So in a little more detail, though we commonly invoke the concept of steric and electronic effects as what dictate reaction outcomes, data science techniques used in our lab can be used to quantify reaction outcomes as a function of molecular properties through mathematical relationships. In other words, our goal is to numerically quantify properties of molecules and correlate those numbers to reaction outputs. We accomplish this using mathematical relationships and molecular descriptors. These correlations yield models that can help us improve and understand reactivity as described by this equation, where a reaction outcome such as yield or selectivity equals a, an intercept plus coefficient one times molecular descriptor one plus coefficient two times molecular descriptor two, and so on. Some of the goals of this process include creating predictive models. For example, can we predict a ligand that will increase yield? And of course, for these models to be interpretable. The interpretability of a model relies wholly on the molecular descriptors used within the model. At times, we are unable to find such correlations, and this can be because we are unable to describe certain molecular properties that are playing a role in affecting the transformation, highlighting the need for proper molecular descriptors. So next, we'll run through a brief and certainly not all encompassing overview of some commonly used molecular descriptors. We'll start with electronic features followed by steric features and then move on to an example of a designer parameter. Finally, I'll make a note on conformationally dependent features and the importance of covering chemical space. To start with some commonly used electronic parameters, the Toma electronic parameter was introduced in the 70s as a way to quantitatively define the electron donating or withdrawing ability of phosphine ligands. Tolman measured the CO stretching frequency of nickel carbonyl complexes as a function of changing the phosphine ligand on nickel. The field of computational chem chemistry has of course enabled us to compute the electronic structure of molecules to extract computed properties rather than relying on experimentally measured properties. One such example is molecular electrostatic potential. Of particular interest is the minimal ele electrostatic potential, also called V-min. Shown here is an electrostatic potential map of trimethylphosphine. The minimum, mi the minimum electrostatic potential in the phosphorus lone pair region on phosphine ligands has been shown to correlate with the classical Tolman electronic parameter. And thus V-min serves as an easily computable measure for the overall ligand electronics. Circling back to IR, IR frequencies and intensities can serve as stereoelectronic parameters. IR properties are considered to be combination steric and electronic terms because the molecular vibrational modes are directional changes dependent on mass and charge of the atoms. Furthermore, intensity is correlated to changes in dipole moment and carbonyl frequencies of benzoic acids are correlated to Hammett values. And just as you would in experimental work, it is recommended that you use easily identifiable frequencies when using IR parameters. For instance, carbonyl stretches can provide a good handle. As a final example in our electronic parameter shortlist, we'll look at atomic charges, specifically NBO charges. NBO analysis is based on a method for transforming wave function into localized form, corresponding to one center lone pairs and two center bonds of Lewis structures. In NBO analysis, the input atomic orbital basis set 
is transform using natural atomic and hybrid orbitals into natural bond orbitals, or NBOs. The NBOs attained using this method correspond to classic Lewis structures, where one center lone pairs and two center bonds are localized. In the image shown here, a color scale from red to green indicates the partial charge on each atom, red being negative and green being positive. NBO partial charges on individual atoms can serve as important measures of electronics. Moving on, steric features provide a good opportunity to go through an abridged history of the development of steric descriptors. To start, in 1974, Tolman introduced cone angles as a way to quantify sterics of a phosphine ligands. Cone angle is the angle swept by a cone that encloses all the ligand groups. In 74, Tolman measured these angles using ball and stick models and a specialized ruler, but today these can be easily computed. In 1976, Verloop introduced multi-dimensional steric descriptors for substituents called steromole parameters. Steromole parameters have multiple values, including length, minimum width, and maximum width. For example, looking at this isopropyl group attached to a blue R group, if we define this as our principal axis, our steromole values would be L, the length down the axis, B1, the minimum width, and B5, the maximum width. And starting in 2012, the Sigmund group placed effort toward further applying these parameters to ligands. Cavallo and Nolan introduced buried volume in 2003, which in the case of phosphine ligands measures the amount of ligand located within a 3.5 angstrom sphere centered at the metal bound to the phosphine. This can of course be applied to an extremely wide range of situations beyond phosphine ligands. And in 2016, Cavallo created a program to make topographic-like steric maps as a way to give a picture of where steric bulk is located. Though I've just showed you a wide array of molecular descriptors, it is still not uncommon to encounter a situation in which available parameters do not adequately describe molecular features dictating the outcome of reaction. For instance, in collaboration with the DOI lab, we came across such a problem when looking at biphenyl substituted phosphine ligands. If we picture a metal complex with biphenyl substituted phosphine ligands, we asked how we could think about the ligands effects. And here we focus on the differences in where the second ring lies in comparison to the metal. Specifically, if this second ring is in the line of sight of the metal. Qualitatively looking at these structures, we can see that varying the substitution between para and meta and varying conformations in meta greatly affect the distal steric environment from the metal's perspective. However, the steric descriptors I just showed you were unable to differentiate between these structures. The solution to this problem was to design a new parameter that could capture these structural differences. We developed a, a parameter called visible volume as a way to approach this problem. While I won't take the time to go through the mechanics of how this parameter is obtained, the parameter quantifies the volume of the phosphine ligand that is visible to the metal center. So this image maps out where the ligand is visible to the blue metal sphere, where green is visible and red is not. This cone shows how these three atoms are partially hidden from visibility by this highlighted atom's shadow. Invisible volume was in part inspired by difficulty posed by this acetal coupling reported by the Doyle group in which phosphines with unique distal steric bulk increased the yield of the reaction. Here, the Doyle lab was able to successfully model the reaction, but the model relies on a complex combination of steric terms using buried volume, Tolman cone angle, and cone angle times V min to describe this, distinct, this distinctive steric profile. But upon development of visible volume parameters, this data set was able to be modeled more succinctly using only a single steric term paired with the original electronic term. And this model now tells us that the steric effect that enhances the reaction is to have phosphines with a small proximal visible volume and a large distal visible volume. And this analysis of what is visible to the metal could differentiate the steric environment experienced by the metal and therefore more directly linked steric hindering, link ligand steric hindrance to the accessibility of the metal to bind a substrate or additional ligand equivalents, thus showcasing the advantages of designing new parameters when the need arises. I'll take the final size of this video to discuss some technical considerations to keep in mind when acquiring molecular descriptors. In module two, Jen Crawford highlighted the importance of performing conformational searches. By nature, conformation affects molecular descriptors. A simple example is shown here, where in rotating about one bond in this biphenyl phosphine produces two conformationally distinct structures. And steric parameters are structure dependent, and thus these two conformations possess different values for steric descriptors. There are different ways to approach the complexity of describing conformationally flexible structure. 
including using the Boltzmann average for a molecule set of conformations or using the minimum en energy conformer or using the minimum property value. Additionally, stati statistical modeling is only able to pick up structural properties dictating reaction outcomes if the data set contains a range of chemical structures. For instance, if phosphine distal steric bulk is important in, is important in driving a reaction, the data set should contain phosphines with both small and large distal steric profiles to enable modeling work close to capture such effects. And that wraps up module 3.0. Next up in module 3.1, we'll walk through how to use our parameter acquisition script.